Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses up on the mountain, mountain top, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. Every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, he shall take my offering. All right, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. hope I got this in the right order. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, the Bible says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We're under the law. And God says, still willingly, but let's read on, with his heart. So you see the Bible, the main thing of the Bible is never head. It's a heart condition. Ye shall take my offering, God's offering. This is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass. God, I have copper. Gold, silver, or brass. God, I got some tin. Gold, silver, or brass. Now, we're under the law. All right, I want a willingly offering, but this is what you're going to bring. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. When we're looking at the law and we're looking at grace, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. The Bible says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Paul say, as far as you're offering the New Testament church, whatever God has blessed you with, bring it. And you see, you'll get churches that go run to Malachi. Oh, you got to bring your tithes. That's not New Testament doctrine. Tithes are under the law. God is not going to burn down your house if you don't get your offering. If you're going to teach your church, your congregation, you must tithe, you have to do this. You are guilty of putting the church under the law. Which Paul will speak about to the Galatians, the whole foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you to put you back under the law. And then on top of that, what we just read in 2 Corinthians 16 too, God wants a cheerful gear. And even still, in chapter 25, verse uh, 2, willingly. You cannot force your congregation, even under the law, to give and have God record it. I'll say another thing, too. I don't know what this would have to do with what we're talking about with offering, but if you give for the purpose to say, okay, here's X amount of dollars, and now I'm going to fill this out on my IRS form, you're not giving it to God. You're giving it so you can record to get money back from the IRS. That's not willingly. That's not a necessarity that, God, that Paul speaks about. Necessary is, oh, my pastor makes me do it. My church makes me do it. Oh, the government makes me do it to get a refund. And I forget which one it is of these occults. So I won't give the name. because I don't. But there's one of them. You are, I have been told, you have to bring in your tax form. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, going, to to, I'm going to check that one before I say any more. But you have to bring your tax forms in. And the church will tithe off your tax forms. 
But I bet you there's probably a lot of other cults that I don't know that practice that do such a thing. I got one right now that I, I, I see the commercials about, and I wonder what that one. It, yeah, I just wonder. And that's one thing. That's another one. That's another. I have to do a search engine about churches that make you tithe. And God wants you to give willingly. Listen, that widow woman brought in two mites. That's all she had. Well, if that's all she had, that Jesus said, that's above the tithe. It's not what you give to the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you. Just, I do above, and that's all I'm going to say because you don't need to know anything else. So I'm not just preaching to an empty bucket. I give to the Lord, and I cheerfully give to the Lord. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Now look at God's going to tell them what to bring. Paul says, whatever God has blessed you and you want to give, give. Gold and silver and brass. These are the Egyptian goods. These are the borrowing of the Egyptians. where they got it from they were slaves they were foremen over the slaves what would they be doing with gold silver and brass maybe brass I don't know how much brass was was expensive back then blue that's a royalty color that's a color that is that is by the dye that makes blue is very hard to get and purple And scarlet, even rare. And when God told the Israelites, you're to borrow the Egyptians, they got it from the Egyptians. And now that you got it from God and the people give it to you, what are you going to get? What are you going to give willingly back to God? Now you can keep it. You can keep the Egyptians. When you get employed and you are paid by a paycheck of the world, what are you going to do back to God? You can keep it. So, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skin. That's a weird one there, badger skin. And shittim wood. What is shittim wood? It's a wood that's gone. It's extinct. It's no more. That's exactly what it is. Unless, it's a wood that has been changed to name that we don't know what it is. That's the best one I can think of. There are people who reject the Bible because it says shit and wood, and there's no such thing as shit and wood. Well, there's no such thing as Transaurus Rex. But you believe he was here, and I don't care if he was or not. Onyx stones. What's a bunch of slaves going to get that from? And stones to be set in the ephod, and the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary. This is going to be the tabernacle. That I may dwell among them. According to all that I showed thee. Now watch this. Ready? Watch this. After the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof. Even so shall ye make it. Let's, I don't know what to call it. But let's say as far as what we can understand. God gave Moses blueprints. I don't know if there were blueprints, but there is a pattern on how to build and set up that tabernacle right there. And I would assume that Noah has some kind of blueprints for that ark. Not only here, here's the measurements and three stories and windows. I would assume that God is in the blueprint business. As he gave to Moses, I would assume he would gave to Noah how to build that ark. So God did not say, all right, Noah... I mean, Moses, we're talking about Moses. Just do it and see what happens. No, there's an order. There's a pattern. And when it comes to our lives, what is our pattern? The Bible and the men that are in it. The good and the bad and Jesus Christ. So there are blueprints. And Moses has seen it before it is built. So where is Moses right now then? He's in heaven. Seeing the layout of heaven. 
Because that tabernacle is going to show you the universe. The brazen altar, that's hell. The, the brazen the water, the priest water, that's the universe, the waters. And then you go into the, the veil of the holy place, that's heaven. And you work your way to God, the mercy seat. So let's look at Hebrews 9.1. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. Let's see what the Bible See, you got to read both Old and New Testament and New and Old Testament to get the complete story. Hebrews 9, 1. <clears throat> For very the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and worldly sanctuary. That's what we're going to read about now. And there was a tabernacle made. The first, wherein was the candlestick. We're going to read about that. The table. And the showbread, we're going to read about that in this chapter, which is called the sanctuary. After the second veil, the tabernacle, which is going to call the holy of law. That's where God is. The most holy place. Made of the Egyptian funds, which had a golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold. We're going to read about that when it was the golden pot that had manna. Remember that? The manna became before the ark. But Moses put it was told to put it into some testimony. There's something else besides the ark of the covenant. There was that testimony. And that from the testimony it is moved into the ark. And when we see that, that, all, uh, that, that ark, gold, so is the pot of manna. And Aaron's rod that budded. That hasn't happened yet. And the tables of the covenant, Moses has not had them in their hands yet. And by the way, it will be copies that are put in that part. If you want the originals, I wonder if you can find those originals somewhere. If God got rid of them totally. And over it, the cherubims of glory, we'll read about that, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. What's that mean? That means Indiana Jones cannot find it. It's nowhere on earth. And when you go to Revelation to the Apostle John, then you find it. And those cherubims are crying out, holy, holy, holy. And the mercy seat is at the right hand of God. So there we go. We're right where we are now. In Exodus 25. And he shall, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Now you see that height, the cubit and a half? That's interesting. Because where that mercy seat is, it'll be a cubit and a half when you put that mercy seat on the thing. That cubic and a half, that mercy seat, is going to be the same height as the top of that table of showbread. And the top of that, that table of showbread and the mercy seat of God, that cubic and a half, is going to be the same place where you get that brazen grill. Where the grill and the brazen altar is. That's a cubic and a half. Everything lines up at that cubic, from where the midst of hell to the table and into the mercy seat are the same. If you were to look at it with that, if you, were to, if you were to move the the brazen uh, water away and take away the veils, if you were to look at the point where that grate is in, at the brazen altar and look straight through, you would see the top of it. You would see the bread, and you would see the mercy seat at the same level. Something about that. And I shall overlay it with pure gold. How's that? Within, without. Outside, all around, gold. It's a box. It's a box. Shall overlay it and shall make upon it a crown of gold round it. So around this box, there's a crown of gold. You could, you would call it crown molding today. Why is it a crown? Because it's where God is. God's king. And each of these articles, if we were to go even further, we can look at Jesus Christ.
and it shall cast four rings of gold for it. On, on the four corners, there's going to be a little ring. And put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be on, the other, on one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. Thou shalt make staves of shittim wood. Now this is long poles. And what they're going to be able to do is you put those, those staves into those rings, and the priest can carry it on their shoulders. Or they can carry it with their hands and walk. It's carrying but you know what's also interesting? The night that Jesus was in the garden, that one of the weapons they bought was staves to bring Jesus. And the staves were handled by the priests of these idols. And thou shalt make staves of shit of wood, overlay them. Here's his wood, then you overlay them with gold. You know what Jesus Christ is? He's human, overlaid with gold. Trees have cells, they have family trees, they have life, they're living, they have limbs, different branches. The 100% man, and then the gold, 100% God. The Bible, gold stands for deity. Jesus Christ. That's one of the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. Silver pictures redemption, buying back. And brass pictures judgment. Now, when we're in this tabernacle, we're looking at the furniture right now, but when we get into the tabernacle, the holy and the most holy place, it's all gold. When you step outside the tabernacle in the courtyard, it's brass. Judgment. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that it may be borne, carried with them. You ain't going to touch that ark. You're going to carry it by the staves. Others have tried to touch it. And the staves shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. Later on it will be when it finally settles in Jerusalem. But not on the journey. Leave the staves there. If you go online, you can look up at all types of artists' representation of what we're seeing here. There's all kinds. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony. All right, there it is. Remember God told put that manna in the testimony? Well, the testimony goes in the ark. What is the testimony? I don't know. Some kind of box too. Some kind of carrying thing. And there's the manna. It can't be the law yet because Moses hasn't brought it down. He hasn't broken it. And he has not gone back up to get the, the copy. So only the manna will be there. Until the, the second uh, tablets. Which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat. Mercy. Amongst the law, there's a mercy seat. You know what the problem with this mercy seat? Only one man can go in there once a year. And you better not have sinned. He has to go in there first for himself. Then he's got to go in there for the nation. No one would go. You know, no one ever will see what this ark and mercy seat will look like. When they move it, it's covered. Once they build it, and once they set it up, no Israelite is going to see that ark or see that mercy seat ever. Uzzah couldn't even touch it. You know what Jesus Christ did when the Bible died? When he died, the Bible said he says he rent that veil from top to bottom. And you know what I can do? I can walk into that mercy seat and say, God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, I am your child. And I am seated in heavenly places. I am seated in that mercy seat by Jesus Christ. I can walk into the most holy place of all and have light. And not from a candlestick. This is a dark place where this mercy and ark is going to be. Alright, so, pure gold. Thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubic and a half the breadth thereof. This is going to sit on the ark. 
it's a lid. And thou shalt make two cherubim. Ooh, we haven't seen that in a while, have we? Last time we saw that, I believe it was in Genesis 4 or 5. If Moses is in heaven like I think he is, there's the cherubims. Man, he's got a perfect picture of what the cherubims look like. Holy, holy, holy. And if this is a case that he got the pattern from heaven. And then we know John was there. We believe, I believe Moses was there. And there's a possibility that Paul was there. With Enoch. Remember, Enoch was raptured. Forgot about him. Of gold, gold, beat in work. You're to beat those cherubims with that gold to make them. No moltenness. No carving. Beaten. And Jesus Christ was beaten. A beaten work shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, one on either side. We read that there are four of them in heaven. And I believe Genesis. He tells us how many. Genesis 3. Genesis 2. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, easy cherub. It just says cherubim's plural. It doesn't say how many. So, and they're not little babies that are naked or in diapers, as you'll see pictures and Christmas cards and all that. Ezekiel will tell us what they look like, and John will tell them what they look like. And we'll get a little more here. Make one cherubim on the one end. The other cherubim on the other end. So on, on either side of God's throne, there are cherubim. John tells us there's four of them. The Bible tells us that there were five of them, and one was above God's seat. That was Lucifer, the song leader. He would strike up the band to sing to God until he fell. And the other cherubim on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubim on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their, oh, there's wings. And they're not angels. They're a whole different class of beings. They have wings, Ezekiel says, and John says, and Moses said. Out of the mouth of two or three, every word shall be established. Three men have told you cherubims have wings. And not one man in the Bible ever told you angels have wings. And yet they'll say, well, you know, angels fly. Okay, yeah, angels fly. I could shoot a spitball across the floor and call it a fly and not have wings. Covering the mercy seat with their wings. So you don't see that mercy seat. If you were to look at it, the wings are covering it. So you cannot see where God is. And their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. And that would be the place where that once a year where that high priest will put the blood there. And the, and the cherubims which have no blood, have no death, do not need to be redeemed. Or looking down at that blood like, what is that? Why does God love that mankind so much and yet they rebel against him since Adam and Eve rebelled? And yet no angels, once they fell, can ever get saved. Has ever the opportunity to be saved. Imagine what the angels think when, they, when, when Jesus Christ has done all that he's done for us. Isaiah 53, dying on that cross. Imagine what the angels think when we rebel and when we disbelieve God and do not do what God has told us to do. And yet you can come to Calvary, get on your knees, say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I need your mercy and grace. And all heaven pipes up and all the angels rejoice and the name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. No angel that's ever fallen can ever get saved. Never. No dogs would be saved. 
And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark to lit. In the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee. Moses. Moses. Not ever does a high priest enter in there and God talks to them. I'm trying wait a minute, I'm trying to think right now with I wonder with Samuel, because Samuel was uh, that's interesting. I think God spoke to Samuel from because it says in air the light of the tabernacle went out and supposed to be forever going. I think Samuel of course I think could have been sleeping right there. Uh, but go on. There will I meet with thee, Moses, and will commune with thee, Moses, from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are on the ark of the testimony. It hasn't even been built yet, and God's already said, I'll be there. Of all things which I give thee in a commandment unto the children of Israel. So how's that? Thou also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, a cubit, a cubic, the breadth thereof, a cubic and a half, the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make there a crown of gold round about it. There's three crowns in this place. The ark, the table, and the incense altar. God the Father, the ark, the mercy seat. Jesus Christ, the table. And the Holy Spirit, the incense altar. Oh, I could preach that. Thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Make there a crown of gold round about. Thou shalt make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about. And thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round again. That would be like a crown molded. So the ark and the table have a crown. Around that table, around the ark, God the Father, God the Son. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold. So these ear, so man and his earrings are imitating the rings that are on these objects for man to carry. And put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Now this one right here tells you put it right in the feet. The legs. Over against the border shall the rings be for the places of the staves to bear the table. Thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. The table may be borne with them. Again, it's a carrion. And I shall make dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all. Of pure gold shalt thou make them. Goldware. I don't know if that's a word. There's silverware. Here's goldware. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. Now we get the Holy Spirit, the light. Jesus said, I'm the light. What is the Holy Spirit? The oil for the light. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten. Let's go to Isaiah 53. It's all through here. God, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, and I believe it's verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we, de we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. That beating of the gold is a representation of Jesus Christ being beaten for our sins. 
You can't molten this stuff. Because Jesus Christ was never molten. You can't chisel it because Jesus Christ wasn't chiseled. That should be beaten work with shall be the candlestick be made. His shaft, his branches, his bowls, his knobs. There's no word for knob. Decoration. And his flowers shall be of this. So this thing is not only a candlestick, it's a work of art. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick on the one side. And three branches of candlestick out of the other side. And it will be one in the center. It will be seven candles. And you'll see that in Revelations 1 through 4. Seven candlesticks. A representation of the church. Three bowls made like unto almonds. That's interesting. Almonds. Aaron's rod with an almond. Here's an almond. Why? Of all the trees, why almond? I got the perfect answer. I don't know. With a knop and a flower in one branch. I want that flower as an almond. They say almonds are the beautiful color. The flowers. And three bowls made like almonds. So when you look at the bowl of this candlestick, you ever see an almond that you eaten? There, It looks just like an almond. I don't know if an almond with a shell or, or an almond. It says almond. And other branches with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same. You probably can draw it. If you have ours, you can draw it out. And a knop under two branches of the same. And a knot under two branches the same. How's that for a memory verse? According to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knots and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. That candlestick with, with the six branches in the center is one piece of gold. Now that's not remarkable. So you cannot beat Jesus Christ into different religions. He's one. And he's not even a religion. So don't say, oh, I'm a Baptist and I got a Jesus. I'm a Presbyterian Jesus. I got a Catholic Jesus. I got a Mormon Jesus. I got a Jehovah Witness Jesus. I got an Atheist Jesus. Paul already warned us there's other Jesuses. You better have that one that's been beaten one, one unit. So when Jesus Christ was beaten, he's 100% God and he's 100% man. Thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof. And they may give light over again. This is the only light in that tabernacle. And when you get to the Holy of Holies, there's a veil between the holy place and the most holy place. There is absolutely no light in that most holy place. Only in the holy place. And this light is going to give light over the six and six bread. One row has six bread. The other row has six bread. Sixty six bread. This light lights that bread that's sitting on the table. So when you open up your Bible, get yourself the candlestick, get yourself the olive oil, sit down at the table, open up your 66 books, let the Holy Spirit and let Jesus Christ gain you into the Bible to study. Now, I, prayer, that incense all to record that, uh, Hebrews 9, it could be in the holy place or it could, but you also need the prayer. You need light, you need prayer, and you need the bread. That's all by God, that's all by Jesus Christ, and that's all by the Holy Spirit. And this lamp has to be trimmed, it has to be taken care of. I don't understand all, I, I, I don't burn candles and all that, I don't, but you got to prop, you got to fill it. And as I've already said, when Samuel, when he's a young boy, this lamp was supposed to be going all the time, it went out. In the time of Eli, the high priest, all messed up, 
the light went out. That was wrong. Thou shalt make seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. Now, let's go to 40.24. Let's see what I got here. Because it says it. 40, verse 24. And scripture, scripture, let's see what the it is. Because it just says it, over against it. If you don't study, you don't go scripture with scripture, 40, 24. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation. Over against the table. On the side, uh, on the side of the tabernacle, southward. Southward in that tabernacle is the candlestick. And what is the it? The table. The Bible told you what that it was. You need light to read the Bible. Now, and the tongues. It has, it has instruments. And the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. And God even tells us, a talent of pure gold. I say a talent of pure gold. There's a note here that says, $29,000 and $85. Uh, $85. I don't know what year that is and all that. But a talent of gold. Go through your Bible. Look up what a talent is. What, what that way it, as I'm doing right now in my own study. Find out what things are a talent. It'll give you an idea. Shall he make it? He? Well, who's the he? We're going to learn later that a man from the tribe of Dan is going to make it. God is speaking to Moses as, all right, it's already in play. It's already doing. It's not future. And yet it's future. And with all the vessels. And look that thou make them after the pattern. There it is again. Which was showed thee in the mount. Somehow, some way, God showed Moses the universe, heaven. Because like I said, this tabernacle was laid out. To the heaven. Now as far as that candlestick. Let me give you some verses here. About Jesus being the candlestick. John 8, 12. 12, 35 and 36. And verse 46. Ephesians 1, 12. About the Holy Spirit being that candlestick. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 13. And about the church. Revelation 1, 2, 3 and 4. You see some other little notes that I have here. And you see already two beaten works here. The cherubim and the candlestick. That candlestick represents Jesus Christ, but in it is the oil. Oh yeah, another thing about the candlestick. Like the brazen labor, there's no measurements. But here is a talent of gold. There's no width, no height, no depth. And this again, this is the only light. There is no other light in this tabernacle. And it's artificial light. And it's olive oil light. 